A new study has found 370% ROI from generative AI deployed in the enterprise. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. One of the biggest questions when it comes to enterprise AI, and specifically generative AI, of course, is what the ROI is truly going to be. Now, we're in a period where there is a broad assumption that this technology is so powerful that ROI is basically inevitable. And that frankly, if you're not capturing it, it's probably your fault, not the AI's fault. Whether that period lasts forever remains to be seen, but it's created the context for a lot of pilots. However, inevitably, as organizations get deeper and deeper into their Gen AI journey, they are starting to try to figure out how to quantify the benefit that is happening. For example, many organizations are painfully aware that pretty much all of the benefit of AI is accruing to the individual employee who's getting those productivity gains because the organization doesn't really have any way of tracking the benefit that employees are getting. So it's entirely contingent upon that employee about whether they deploy their saved time to more work pursuits or whether it's just entirely for them. Point being that I think that enterprises are getting a lot more keen to try to figure out how AI is actually benefiting them in specific numerical terms. And that's why a new study from IDC really jumped out at me. Now, one thing that's important to note, just for the sake of caveating and grains of salt, is that this study was commissioned by Microsoft. So obviously that is not an unbiased party. Still, in terms of how the study was conducted, it's not like this was pulled out of thin air. IDC surveyed over 4,000 people that they call business leaders and decision makers who are responsible for, quote, bringing AI transformation to life within their organization. Supplementally, they interviewed eight large enterprises about their AI strategies and use of AI within their businesses. Let's talk about some of the key findings and then dig in on a deeper level. First of all, and perhaps most expectedly, generative AI saw a huge jump in usage between 2023 and 2024. It was 55% in 2023, jumping all the way to 75% this year. Also in the realm of the unsurprising, so far a lot of the emphasis for businesses has been on productivity. The way the IDC frames it is they say that the primary way in which organizations are monetizing AI today is through productivity use cases, and on a worldwide level, the top two business outcomes organizations are trying to achieve using AI are employee productivity and top-line growth. This makes sense. Thinking about employees saving time doing the things they're already doing is a very natural place to start the AI journey. What's interesting, though, is that there does seem to be a shift. The fact that organizations are starting to think about top-line growth, and also the IDC says in the next 24 months, a greater focus will be placed on functional and industry use cases. Maybe the most eye-popping finding, for every $1 a company invests in Gen AI, the ROI is 3.7x across industries. What's more, organizations considered leaders in AI are seeing their investments pay off at a significantly higher rate than the average. Top leaders using generative AI are realizing a 10.3x return on their investment. Finally, these organizations say the top challenge is a lack of employees with necessary skills and capabilities to utilize AI. I have a lot of thoughts on that that I will come back to in a minute, but let's try to dig in on this ROI question because that seems to be the one that is really notable. Now, what's challenging about this is that this comes from a survey question, what would you estimate your organization's ROI is for every $1 spent on generative AI projects or initiatives? In other words, this is self-reported, it's estimated, and there's no guarantee that how one AI officer thinks about how they determine ROI is anything at all like how another AI officer thinks about ROI. This doesn't mean that it's not an interesting data point. Even if they're off, in other words, the fact that these folks are estimating their ROI at 370% is in and of itself telling. And this maybe moves us back to how people are using this today. It seems likely that the most common measure is going to be around time saved. IDC writes that productivity use cases are delivering the greatest ROI today. When asked which AI use case has provided the greatest ROI for your organization, 43% said productivity use cases. In other words, individual employee productivity and efficiency, such as reducing time analyzing or completing tasks, versus 31% saying functional use cases, use cases specific to individual lines of business or business functions, and 26% saying that it's industry use cases, such as improved retail ordering or streamlined manufacturing. In terms of where in the organization enterprises are using AI, it ranges from the top line of 90% using it for marketing and PR, makes sense, there's a lot of words and images there, and those are the two most used categories of Gen AI right now down all the way to product development, which is still at 56%. Again, caveat, given that these were people who were managing AI transformation inside their organizations, this is already a subset of businesses that are probably more AI savvy than the average. All over this survey is the sense that we're transitioning from productivity alone to revenue generation, from just saving time to improving outcomes. 38% of organizations said that they had a plan to monetize functional use cases within the next 24 months, and 37% said they had a plan to monetize industry use cases. Let's shift over then to what is holding adoption back. In the realm of the expected, once again, 
Security, privacy, and compliance remain major considerations. But by far, organizations identified their top challenge as a lack of employees with the necessary skills. And the numbers didn't come down hugely between 2023 and 2024. In 2023, 52% of organizations said that their top challenge was a lack of skilled workers versus 45% of respondents saying that now. The next highest challenge category was cost and concerns about data or IP loss, which were down all the way at 27%. I wanted to soapbox for just a minute here, because obviously skills and capabilities is where superintelligence started its journey. It has been very clear for some time that there is a big what we call enablement gap, the space between what an enterprise or organization believes they can get out of AI and what they are actually getting out of AI right now. It made sense to us to start the journey of trying to solve for the enablement gap by trying to improve skills or capabilities. That's where the tutorial version of the superintelligent platform first came from. What we found was not that that wasn't a concern, but that when you really pushed on it, the challenge for employees wasn't just that they didn't know how to use AI tools. It was more that they didn't know what to use them for. Framed differently, you can know all the prompting techniques in the world, but if you don't have any sense of which workflows and business processes could be updated and improved with those prompting techniques, it's not going to move the needle. Most organizations lack a system for tracking broadly and publicly how employees are experimenting with and getting value out of AI right now. What that means is that every experiment that an employee does, every pilot that a team undergoes, really only stands to benefit the experimenter or the pilot participant. There's no way to translate the experience, the learnings, the new best practices, the new techniques that come out of those experiments and pilots. This means that adoption happens in fits and starts. Every person across the organization is forced to be a use case creator, rather than just copying off the homework of the early adopters and power users who figure it out the fastest. That's why Superintelligence shifted so much emphasis to use case sharing and helping organizations broadcast what their teams and individuals are learning about how to use AI to get value to everyone else in the org. The point being, ultimately, is that organizations aren't wrong when they're identifying that their employees' ability to utilize AI is a big blocker. It's just that we don't believe that the solution is going to be a bunch of courses in traditional learning and development. It's going to be much more about systems for amplifying and speeding up the process by which business process improvements and new AI-enabled workflows diffuse across the organization. Now, summing up this study, it's clear that it paints a snapshot of an enterprise AI adoption period that is in transition. Gen AI has fully infiltrated at this point the enterprise. If your company is not using Gen AI based on these numbers, you are now significantly in the minority. More than that, for many organizations, they're already past their first or even second phases of experiments. They're starting to be able to measure the ROI of productivity gains, and they're thinking about how they can use AI to create new opportunities for themselves, to generate more revenue. This is exciting because, as I've always said, one of my fears with AI is that companies will view it exclusively as an efficiency technology, a way to do the same with less. I think the companies that win, ultimately, will be those who view it as an opportunity technology, a way to do more with the same or way, way more with just a little more. I think when organizations reframe their goals as capturing totally new and previously unavailable opportunity, that's where we avoid big negative externalities of entire categories of jobs wiped off the face of the planet. And instead, we think about how we supercharge all of our people to use AI to create and capture opportunities that simply were not possible before. I think there are some telling and promising statistics in here that suggest that that's the way that companies are starting to think about this. And that is a trend I can certainly get behind. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching, as always. Until next time, peace.